More now on the breaking news. A third accuser leveling allegations of sexual misconduct against the U.S. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Joining us now, the attorney for Brett Kavanaugh, Beth Wilkinson. Beth, thanks very much for coming in. Sure. Well. All right, so first there was uh, Dr. C uh, Christine Blas Blasey Ford, Deborah Ramirez, the Yale University student, now Julie Swetnick with a sworn declaration. How's your client, the judge, reacting? Well, he's outraged, as you might imagine, by this most recent uh, allegation. He has never met this woman. He doesn't know Miss Swetnick. He didn't go to parties with her. And we've already have, I've received calls myself from women and men who went to high school with him. No one knows this woman. No one knows, remembers seeing her at any of the parties that they attended. And they're absolutely serious allegations if they're true. But if that's so, there's no excuse for the, his, her lawyer not going straight to the police. There's no one stopping any investigation and any lawyer worth their salt would put their, their client's interests first and go straight to the police or to the FBI. And it is absolutely well, outrageous that this is being launched the day before without having some kind of investigation. Well, it's absolutely well, Should outrageous. there be an FBI, full-scale FBI uh, investigation, not only of Julie Swetnick's, this third woman's uh, allegations, but the other two women's allegations as well? No, no, no. The point is he was in control of this, the lawyer. He could have gone to the police and should have gone to the police if he took it seriously the minute he found out about it. And he didn't do you're that. Talking you about, you're talking about Michael Avenatti. Yes. Why in the world did he not well, take these allegations he did, to the police? He did get the sworn statement from her, which they have submitted to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Those are not law enforcement people. As an attorney, your obligation is to your client. And if you believe that these crimes were committed against your client, you should go immediately to law enforcement. Everyone is saying those are the people who have the right tools to investigate. Ask yourself why he didn't go to law enforcement. You, why is there almost no detail in that affidavit whatsoever? Well, I want to go through some of these uh, elements in the affidavit. Uh, you're a former federal prosecutor. You could uh, ask the FBI to investigate these allegations as well. Uh, I'm not the attorney for this woman. I don't know. But, I'm but sure you're trying to clear any, any insinuation no. against your client, Judge Kavanaugh. No, Judge Kavanaugh doesn't know her. This never happened, and he said that over and over and over again, that he never engaged in any of that behavior. I'm asking you why in this process, which has been so debased on both sides, why are people who have these serious allegations not going to law enforcement themselves and saying, take a look at this? There must be a reason as a lawyer that he didn't take these allegations to the police himself. No one is stopping him. Has your, has your client, Judge Kavanaugh, already said under oath, declared under oath to the Senate Judiciary Committee that none of these allegations by these women occurred? Yes, he's already, he was asked those questions generally and more specifically, I don't know about this specific... He told Congress, excuse, apparently, according to reports, there's not a kernel of truth in any of these allegations. This was before this third woman came forward. But I, I assume he's saying the same thing about all three women's allegations. Exactly, exactly. And, and I'm going to go through the allegations, but I want to play a clip from you, because Kellyanne Con Conway, the White House uh, counselor, uh, was on uh, CNN earlier in the week, and she made this point, and it's a significant point. Listen to this. Sure. You see a pattern in their practice. Which is what? Well, that there, there, are many, there are many women who say that they've been wronged by the same man, the Harvey Weinstein, the Les Moonves, the, you know, others. I don't need to name names. I'm just saying that when one woman comes forward, others come forward. That's what's happened in most of these cases. And I know it's not for lack of trying that people are trying to prove the same here and have not. She was speaking when uh, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford had made the initial allegations against him. But since then, Deborah Ramirez has come forward, who was a student at Yale University, and now Julie Swetnick has come forward. And her allegations are very, very brutal in, in this sworn affidavit. But what do you say to you know, Kellyanne Conway when she said, well, there's only one woman, and usually if there's a, a harassment or sexual assault, it doesn't just happen once other women come forward, and other women are now coming forward. But the difference in these situations is there were multiple people that were supposed to be at these places when it occurred. And in every instance, those other people have said it didn't happen or they have no memory of it. So that's true with Dr. Blasey Ford. That's definitely true with Debbie Ramirez, who said she didn't even remember who it was when she first started talking to her other friends about it. And here, the supposedly there were tons of women that were there. There were men that were there. This woman claimed she went to 10 different parties. And there's not one other person, there's not a detail about when it was, 
what time of year it was. There's nothing that would make any indicia of, of reliability. She said she went to a, a whole bunch of parties between 1980, 19, between 1981, 1983, and Brett Kavanaugh was there, and Mark Judge, uh, a friend of his, was there as well. I'll read to you a couple sentences. On numerous occasions at these parties, I witnessed Mark Judge and Brett Kavanaugh drink excessively and engage in highly inappropriate conduct, including being overly aggressive with girls and not taking no for an answer. This conduct included the fondling and grabbing of girls without their consent. One, one, one point. Uh, and then she goes on. I observed Brett Kavanaugh drink excessively at many of these parties and engage in abusive and physically aggressive behavior towards girls, including pressing girls against them without their consent, grinding against girls, and attempting to remove or shift clothes, uh, girls' clothing to expose private parts. Uh, you want to respond to that? All I can tell you is what he knows. He, none of that ever happened, and everyone who is calling and contacting us who was at parties with him has never heard of that. And these are the type of allegations that they were going on, 10 or 12 parties. This is not just one time. She's claiming this happened for years, and no one else can verify it, and no one else is saying it. Now, they allege in there that there's other people that can. Why haven't they brought those people forward? Why not Mark Judge? Why not ask him to come testify be, uh, be before the committee if they were so close, uh, Judge Kavanaugh and Mark Judge? Judge Kavanaugh doesn't control the asking who testifies in front Would of the committee. Would you like him to come forward and testify? Mark Judge has said he doesn't want to. He's given a statement saying none of this happened, it, and he, it is totally inconsistent with the conduct and the person he knows, the integrity and the type of person that Judge Kavanaugh is. He's given his statement, and you know what's happened to him? He's become harassed. He's had to leave. He has had to hire a lawyer. He wrote a book about his own alcohol and drug use. He was open and honest about that. And he doesn't want to become part of the circus. And I, how could you blame him? Who would want to be part of this when every day new allegations that supposedly were around for many years could have been brought out in this process when it started at the very beginning? And Mr. Avenatti, as far as I know, this weekend was dangling this out in the press. Why wasn't this brought forward? These are such serious allegations. One has to question. Why? In, in his opening statement, the statement that he's going to deliver tomorrow before the Senate Judiciary Committee, assuming this hearing uh, goes forward, uh, he says this. I spent most of my uh, time in high school focused on academics, sports, church, and service. But I was not perfect in those days, just as I am not perfect today. I drank beer with my friends, usually on weekends. Sometimes I had too many. In retrospect, I said and did things in high school that make me cringe now. You've discussed this with him, I assume. What makes him cringe yeah. now? I, I mean, I think we all have those things when we look back. There's all kinds of things that we say when we're 16, 17, 18 years old that we wish we didn't say. And that is the entire part of the maturing process. And I said, I hope my children know that if they say something stupid or do something stupid, that they'll be able to recover and live a life of public service and give back to their community. And so I think it's, of, of course, I hope someone would say that. He Most people, but you know, it's significant. I don't think in the Fox News interview he said that. This is no, a, he, a, he did. He, he that, said he he had that they, had too they many did things that make him cringe. Yes, now. he said, used those exact words, as, as far as I recall. Yeah. He said things if you look back that would make you cringe. He, as, as my recollection is he said people drink too much. I, I don't. I don't. Rem we can check that. We can check exactly how far he went in the Fox. This to me looks like a new element. And, and let me read to you a couple other accusations that this this woman uh, Julie Swetnick makes in the sworn affidavit. During the years 1981-82, I became aware of efforts by Mark Judge, Brett Kavanaugh, and others to spike the punch at house parties. I attended with drugs, I, house parties I attended with drugs and or grain alcohol so as to cause girls to lose their inhibitions and their ability to say no. I, I mean, I don't know. When you say you went to 10 parties like that and you kept going to those parties, even though that was happening, and you saw that supposedly happening to other girls, that is a different thing not to report. I understand why women don't report sexual assault. It's very difficult, and no one should criticize them for that. But this is a whole different level. This is saying I went with other women, other girls at the time, I saw all this happening, and I went back. And I went back again, and I never told anyone, and I never brought it up. I never thought about what was happening to those other women. I, I just, I have a very hard time believing that's true. No. I really do. I think it's, it, it is of a different magnitude, and that it's coming out the day before the hearing. One has to question why. 
If there is something to that, as I said, I would have expected Mr. Avenatti to go straight to the police and refer it for investigation. Uh, the most serious allegation she makes uh, is this one, and I'll read it, and it's ugly, it's awful. I also witnessed efforts by Mark Judge, Brett Kavanaugh, and others to cause girls to become inebriated and disoriented so they could then be gang raped in a side room or bedroom by a train of numerous boys. I have a firm recollection of seeing boys lined up outside rooms at many of these parties waiting for their turn with a girl inside the room. These boys included Mark Judge and Brett Kavanaugh. I mean, it's outrageous. Really, you witnessed gang rapes and you never said anything? You've never come forward? You, we know Judge Kavanaugh has been under scrutiny for months, months. And you witness something like that as a parent of a daughter and two sons? I cannot imagine not coming forward when this man was, was named, if that's what you witnessed. I, I just, I don't understand that. And I don't understand why, well, she why says, they wouldn't go to the police. She says that these boys, according to her, and we haven't confirmed any of this, obviously, she said these boys targeted particular girls so they could be taken advantage of, usually a girl that was especially vulnerable because she was alone at the party or shy. Vulnerable girls were targeted. That's the accusation she makes. I assume she's including herself in that, in that accusation. I mean, it sounds horrible. I agree. No one is denying that these allegations don't sound horrible. She doesn't say that it was Judge Kavanaugh, but she said he was there. But she said there were many other men there and many other women. And that's the part that I, I don't understand, and I don't understand because why. Because a lot of these women, you know this, and you've, you've been involved in these kinds of cases over these. A lot of these young women, especially, they're afraid to even tell Absolutely. their parents. They Absolutely. don't tell anybody. They feel awful. They feel degraded. They feel embarrassed, Absolutely. humiliated. And for years and years, they might stay silent. I, I agree. And it's a horrible thing what women have had to go through. And it is... It is one of the few good things that has happened in this country in the last few years that the Me Too movement has come out and women have been able to speak out. And it's, it's important. But it's also important that everyone gets a defense and gets to face those accusations fairly and gets information and details. And what's shocking about this is the lack of detail, the outrageous allegations, and the timing of this. He when you're talking about years of gang rape, as I read. That's what she's saying, years of gang rape. He says uh, in a statement that's going to be released tomorrow and read at the hearing, this effort to destroy my good name will not drive me out. The vile threats of violence against my family will not drive me out. I am here this morning to answer these allegations and to tell the truth. And the truth is that I never sexually assaulted anyone, not in high school, not in college, not ever. He's staying in. He's not withdrawing his name. Is that right? Right. Despite what it's done to his family in the process and I, I think the dignity of our entire, you know, confirmation process is at risk. We have to remember that these people are human beings. He is a human being. So is she. So are the other people involved, including Mark Judge. Why would anyone want to participate? But I think more troubling for all of us, why would anyone want to put themselves up for confirmation ever again for any position in the government if this is what they have to go through? All right, Beth Wilkinson, thank you very much for coming in. Sure, thank we'll see you. what happens at this hearing tomorrow, if in fact it still takes place. Appreciate it very much.